Welcome to the Porch Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you, Matt? I am good, Brian. It's hard to believe that the uh, summer is just flying by, and we've got the first September weekend of racing coming up. Yeah, Labor Day. Labor Day is Monday, Matt, but we're going to talk about Saturday races. We're going to talk about the Breeders' Cup Classic preps. Uh, we got some 10 furlong grade one races on either coast to talk about today. But first, let's talk about Saratoga. Last week, Archangelo uh, proved himself. Um, you had to like everything you saw from the Son of Arrogate up into the Belmont Stakes. Could he come back? Uh, over two months later and do it again in the Travers? Yes, sir. Archangela looked good winning the Travers, and he's clearly the three-year-old leader as of today. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And and as was the case in the Belmont Stakes, I thought that Archangelo looked like a winner every step of the way. Yeah, he, he also might have looked like a winner before the race even started. That's He's an impressive-looking horse as well. And uh, the Jenna Antonucci story that – the nice, the positive. She gets so excited down the stretch of these races <laughs> that continues. So that's nice. Uh, although it wasn't all good news at Saratoga on Saturday, and, and Saratoga's just had a bad meet. We saw two horses uh, fatally injured on Saturday. Uh, of course, New York Thunder was uh, looking like a winner in the grade one Jerkins Memorial and broke down in the stretch, and it was ugly, Matt. And we just had, you know, somebody said to me, well, that's, happened in racing since the beginning for 300 years but but not like this not so often and uh, saratoga's had a had a tough meet for sure yeah that's for sure brian uh, um uh it 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 certainly has been uh out of the ordinary above far above the statistics uh, uh of the recent few years um and you can't put your finger on one thing uh, that that causes this to happen. Uh, it, it's it's multifactored, uh, uh, clear things like the weather and sealed tracks, and then and then bigger issues, in my opinion, about racing. Bigger issues that I don't know if anybody is willing to tackle, and and that's the breeding of today's thoroughbreds, uh, uh, sires uh, breeding to hundreds and hundreds of mares. You know, we've got a, you know, I, I won't say handful, but 10, 12 uh, uh, stallions that are, are breeding a significantly unusual number of horses, uh, you know, but uh, that's where we are. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you, and I, I glad, uh, glad you brought up a few points. Uh, breeding certainly has changed in our lifetime, and it's, uh, yeah, inbreeding, uh, breeding to the same stallion, uh, breeding to stallions that, that have, have shown uh, weaknesses within their fragility, in their uh, in their makeup. Uh, a lot of lot of problems in the breeding shed. Then, then there's the the, the trainers. Uh, connections, whether they're all on the up and up with uh, uh, enhancing horses' performances. Uh, you you, you got to wonder how much of that is still at play. Then you got the track itself. You know, I know Saratoga is known for rainstorms. It's been another summer where just a lot of bad storms of the uh, rain up there. And uh, I wonder if that plays a part in the, in, in the track. But, uh, you know, synthetics, th th there should be more talk about synthetics but you're right it's 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 a lot um dirt racing on the way out all weather tracks coming in or or is that just putting a band-aid on the issue i uh, no question brian in my mind it's putting a band-aid a band-aid on uh on the issues it, it it's it's selectively looking at the performance of horses on uh uh, on the on the synthetic tracks, it's pulling out one statistic without mentioning and talking about other statistics uh, of of the synthetic tracks. It's talking about looking at only the pros and not the cons. Um, I, I I 
want to say to our horse center followers, I, I read uh, just the other day a uh, letter to the editor that uh, Stephen Christ, um, and I know that's somebody that both you and I have uh, respected over the years as a past uh, uh, journalist, uh, a letter that he wrote to the Thoroughbred Daily News about this knee-jerk reaction uh, to synthetic tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, we might differ a little bit on our opinion. I, I'm all for doing the safest thing for horses, and I do think, in general, synthetic tracks are probably safer for the horses than dirt tracks in general. But horses are still going to get hurt on synthetic tracks. Horses are still getting hurt on synthetic tracks, and. Uh, there's a lot to it, Matt, and, and, and days like Saturday at Saratoga are difficult, uh, but uh, we're going to move on. We're going to move on to the races of the week because I think we have some interesting betting races. We have some interesting races on the Breeders' Cup Classic Trail. Archangelo is pointed there, but so are a lot of horses that we're going to see Saturday. Here's our cover boy. Our cover boy is Go Rocket Ride. Go Rocket Ride with a French spelling, the son of Candy Ride, Matt. 20 years ago, Candy Ride threw in a track record performance to beat Medaglia Doro at Del Mar, a mile and a quarter in the Pacific Classic. Now his son looks to emulate his daddy in the Pacific Classic two decades later, Matt. He's listed as the favorite on the rail. Mike Smith on again as he was for that Haskell win. There's a lot to like about Go Rocket Ride. Yeah, there certainly is, Brian. Uh, um, Pacific Classic uh, three three-year-olds are in the field. Um, I think it's five three-year-olds in the 33-year history of the Pacific Classic have won the this late summer uh, race at Del Mar Racetrack. Um, I don't know. I'm sure we'll talk about it as we go through the field, but it, it, it feels to me like a year when uh, the three-year-olds really need uh, attention to be paid to them. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. I agree with that. Best Pal won the Pacific Classic in its inaugural running uh, as a three-year-old. And, and since then, only four others, as you mentioned, uh, uh, came along to win the Pacific Classic. Three-year-olds seem to run a little bit less. I guess all horses run a little bit less. But three-year-olds face their elders in the summer and fall a little bit less than they used to. Uh, but here, I think it is a good opportunity. Go Rocket Ride has been very good in four lifetime starts for trainer Richard Mandela. Hall of Fame trainer Richard Mandela seems to be able to get horses moving in the right direction, doesn't push them. Um, kind of the West Coast version of Bill Mott, if you will, Go Rocket Ride, really looks to be thriving now off that Haskell win. Uh, he was uh, forced on the sidelines very briefly by a sickness after running second to practical move early on the Derby Trail. That was his only loss. He's been really good since. He also showed the ability, Matt, to come from just off the pace in the Haskell. Really heady ride by Mike Smith tracing Arabian Night. Arabian Night, another three-year-old, and probably once again the speed of the speed here in the Pacific Classic. I think Arabian Night is a super talented horse and only three lifetime starts for trainer Bob Baffert. But there's a lot of horses who like to press the pace in the Pacific Classic, making Arabian Night's job, again, pretty tough. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, you know, and I just want to add about Go Rocket Ride. Uh, uh, after the Haskell, uh, uh, Richard Mandela seemed to already have made a, a decision, although he was being a little coy. I think he had the Pacific Classic in mind uh, right after the victory in the Haskell. Yeah, it, it makes sense. It's a good bridge between the Haskell and the Breeders' Cup Classic and go rocket ride a horse to beat. Arabian Night will get a lot of plays, one of two Bob Bafferts, both of them. You're probably looking at the second and third choice behind go rocket ride. Arabian Night came into the Haskell as a pretty clear favorite, Matt, off a long layoff and only two career starts. And he was pressing a good pace in the Haskell, and he, he stayed on reasonably well to be third, although go rocket ride zoomed by him pretty easily at the head of the stretch. Uh, Arabian Nights should be a pace setter here. Then you got a long list of horses, Stiletto Boy, older horses now, Stiletto Boy, Defunded, Slow Down Andy, uh, and even Go Rocket Ride have shown speed or the ability to be right there. So Arabian Knight will have his work cut out for him, but a talented Uncle Mo 
both Go Rocket Ride and Arabian Night have been working very well since the Haskell out back out in California. Let's talk about the funded, Matt. He was a little disappointing last time, but he's won a bunch, a gaggle of graded stakes, uh, has the older horse sort of dialed in for trainer Bob Baffert. Yeah, and and defunded uh, amongst a group of uh, older horses in this field that I guess, Brian, uh, uh, for the most part, have to be called inconsistent, um, defunded with his uh, with his number of wins and big wins in the in the Gold Cup and the Californian uh, third place in the Santa Anita Handicap and a second in the Pegasus World Pegasus World Cup. We know that he has run the mile and a quarter distance before and handled it well. Uh, um, probably the mo the most consistent performer amongst the older horses in this field. Yeah, I, I think you could say that about the older horses, East Coast, West Coast. They have taken turns beating each other, and it's hard to find any distinction. Last year, Flight Line, of course, was a, a standout among older horses. This year, not so much, at least uh, at, at distances of nine furlongs or more. Um, yeah, Defunded won the mile and a quarter Hollywood Gold Cup, but I don't think that was a good field. I don't think it was the kind of field he'll see here. Much tougher field. Stiletto Boy, actually, the winner of the Santa Anita Handicap, probably beat a better field that day and uh, stiletto boy is one of those sneaky horses he he doesn't win a lot but uh he he runs a lot of good races and he can handle a mile and a quarter and he's got some speed as well yeah absolutely brian uh, um we i think we can play that scenario out with a number of these uh older horses in here a uh, stiletto boy uh, uh after that santa anita handicap win uh um What's a uh, guess a disappointing sixth in the Stephen Foster because, as you said, uh, Stiletto Boy usually is a consistent performer. Has got some nice, had a nice third place in the Oaklawn Handicap, a third place in the Pegasus World Cup. Hard to, is a horse that's hard to just toss out of consideration, certainly for uh, uh, trifecta finishes. Yeah, absolutely. Stiletto Boy has a lot of second and third place finishes in his career. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. There's that fast pace button that they're showing. And uh, yeah, I, I think Arabian Night is the one horse we know that will want to go out there. But then they talk about Slow Down Andy, another uh, tough horse, a little bit like Stiletto Boy. But uh, Slow Down Andy is, is another one who runs a lot of good races for trainer Doug O'Neill. He's right there. Go Rocket Ride, not far behind. Stiletto Boy and Defunded, we already talked about. So a lot of uh, pace presence and a lot of the good horses, a lot. But those five right there are five of the favorites in this race. So it should be a solid pace. I wonder if Arabian Night gets out there just a little bit with the other four chasing. But uh, it should be a strong early fractions in this mile and a quarter race. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, that's what Arabian Knight has done uh, in in all of his starts. You know, uh, he has been the quintessential Bob Baffert kind of horse. Uh, heavily bet, uh, wins by open lengths, going to the lead and 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 playing uh, catch me if you can. Uh, um, worked real well in the first two, uh, in the Haskell not so much. And hey. This is definitely the toughest field that Arabian Night and and many and several others uh, have ever faced. Yeah, yeah. The Haskell, the Haskell was good, and the three year olds in there were good three year olds. But this is all the horses at Ton Furlong. Um, you know, we talk about as much as we may like the three year olds in this race, Matt. It is horses like Stiletto Boy and Defunded, not the three year olds who have winning experience at Ten Furlongs. Even Tripoli, who won this race. A couple years ago uh, are, are the ones with 10 furlong experience. Looking back at the pace a little bit, we talked about the uh, early horses out there and the, even Katana, who has some pretty good form, is the other Doug O'Neill in the race. Then you go back and you look at horses that might uh, take advantage of a good pace. Uh, Senor Buscador was the horse who looked good over the track last time, coming from last to win the San Diego, beating horses like Slow Down Andy and uh, Defunded in the local prep. Yeah, and I know Senior Buscador is a horse that you have liked uh, 
have liked in the past. And that was a big performance in the San Diego handicap. And now we're looking at on the morning line, senior Buscador assigned uh, 10 to one. I mean, off of that big win in the San Diego handicap, that's an intriguing uh, uh, odds play. Yeah. And if we're looking at the odds after go rocket ride, uh, who's I think a deserving favorite off the high school win and the Baffert horses, Defunded and uh, Arabian Night. There, there are a lot of nice horses who have odds in here. Slow Down Andy, one of those that'll be out there. Stiletto Boy, another one that'll be out there. Senor Buscador coming out off a nice win over the track for trainer Tim Fincher, ten to one. Then there's Skinner, the third three-year-old, the one we haven't talked about at all. He's another one that could rally map ten to one. Uh, hasn't broken through in a stakes race yet, but he really looked like he was knocking on the door heading into the Kentucky Derby. He too had a little bit of sickness that knocked him out, but uh, he's come back with a good prep. I think Skinner bred to bred to like 10 furlongs and a horse who has consistently rallied is another interesting horse in here. Yeah. Trained by uh, John Sheriffs and, and I guess throughout this horse's career, uh, Sheriffs has put uh, uh, Skinner in races that, See that make you want to think that uh, uh, Sheriff feels like he's got a talented horse uh, in Skinner. Uh, he ran in uh, in in graded stakes races, grade one, grade two, as a two year old when he was still a maiden, and then uh, had that time off and came back to to break his maiden special way just this year in uh in february and then once again you know play put skinner in some ambitious spots so uh, you gotta respect uh that the fact that uh, uh sheriffs has not shied away from tough races with skinner yeah skinner skinner's one on a long list even paroli who was second in the hollywood gold cup and Tripoli, uh, who won this race two years ago. Those are horses who could rally, who could like 10 furlongs. And if the pace is strong, uh, a good betting race in the Pacific Classic. Matt, we're going to go from Zoom from the West Coast, uh, north of San Diego there to upstate New York next for the Jockey Club Gold Cup. This used to be a mile and a half classic at Belmont in the fall. Now it's a mile and a quarter at Saratoga. But it is a Breeders' Cup Classic prep, and there's some good horses in here. It's headlined by a couple of the best older uh, males in the country in proxy and rattle and roll. Yeah, uh, got a good field uh, of of eight, probably maybe not quite as as uh, 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 even a field as in the Pacific Classic. But yeah, an interesting bunch. Uh, we've got uh, proxy as the morning line favorite. Yeah, Proxy, it, it was a, a tough decision here who to make the favorite between Proxy and Rattle and Roll. I think Rattle and Roll has been a little bit more consistent. Maybe Proxy has better uh, overall form against the top uh, the top of the sport uh, going back a little longer. Michael Sidham trains uh, Proxy, his son at Tappet, and he's running big races now for a few years. Proxy also is coming off a nice win at Monmouth Park. Rattle and Roll beat him pretty easy in the Stephen Foster, but that was one of those races. Proxy every once in a while doesn't seem all that interested in running. He didn't that day at Ellis Park. Monmouth Park, he came back in the Monmouth Cup grade three race. He should have won, and he did, but he did so on the lead and uh, joined the rail here in a race without a lot of speed. I, I think that makes uh, a, an interesting um, a show of versatility from Proxy heading into the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Yeah, and you mentioned the 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 depth of competition that Proxy uh, has faced, you know. Uh, and before that, you know, I guess we got to draw a line through that. Stephen Foster, eighth place finish. Um, Proxy won the San, the excuse me the Oaklawn handicap and was second in the Santa Anita handicap by just a neck. Yeah, he's done well at a mile and a quarter. That Sandy Needed Handicap was a very good performance, just missing to Stiletto Boy, who he came back and got by in the Oakland Handicap, as you mentioned. So Proxy's run a lot of good races in his last, oh, six races or so. I guess he's won three graded stakes. Of course, he won the grade one Clark last fall uh, at Churchill Downs. So Proxy is maybe the favorite. 
The other one is Rattle and Roll. Rattle and Roll uh, has always been a good horse. This is a seven-time stakes winner, Matt. Seven-time stakes winner. You don't see that a lot. And, and Rattle and Roll has been never better, I think, than his last four races, which include three graded stakes wins and then a pretty near miss uh, last time when he was rallying well down the stretch in the Stephen Foster. Yeah, uh, uh, certainly, Brian. Uh, uh, trainer Kenny McPeak uh, has had rattle and roll, uh, I guess, on a roll, Brian, uh, uh, with uh, a whole bunch of good races in a row. Um, the last five uh, getting triple-digit buyer speed figures, just showing a, just showing a consistency. Uh, uh, that's second in the Stephen Foster, and before that, three grade three victories they were you know they were against pretty good fields uh, um uh, hasn't you know broken through in the grade one level but you know i think this jockey club gold cup grade one uh is the right kind for rattle and roll yeah this this is this is not the strongest grade one in the world um i think you have two legitimate breeders cup classic possibilities in the race in, in rattle and roll and proxy uh so yeah it, it's an opportunity for either proxy or rattle and roll to get their second career grade one a good spot to do it for both of them um looking at the field again it looks a little bit like proxy rattle and roll who's going to be the favorite who's going to be the second choice and then everybody else although i will say there's some interesting horses in here matt um clapton Gets a rat or tease, uh, might be lower than that eight to one that we pegged him at here. Uh, brand new connections for Clapton, and he's done pretty well in graded stakes the last three starts. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting uh, uh, trainer change uh, after you know the success that Clapton's had in the suburb, second in the suburb, and third in the Pimlico Special, winning the. Uh, winning the Ghost Zapper, uh, a grade three, was moved to the barn of uh, Chad Summers. Chad Summers of uh, Mind Your Biscuits fame. Yeah, and I, I believe there was actually a private purchase here too. So I think that's part of the uh, the reason that he switched barns. But Clapton he didn't really threaten rattle and roll uh, two starts back, nor, nor did he threaten charge it last time. But he ran good enough. Looks like he can handle a mile and a quarter. Maybe the connections uh, give him a little boost here. Clapton uh, will be one of those horses vying for the third choice. Maybe the most interesting other horse after the two favorites, Matt, in the race is Tyson. Now, Tyson is one of two for trainer Josie Carroll. Josie Carroll came back. Uh, if you remember Careless Jewel, uh, Josie Carroll brought Careless Jewel to Saratoga to win a big race a few years ago. And now she's trying to do it again with two horses in here. Can't throw either one of them out, but Tyson looks really interesting in that he's four out of five lifetime and he looks like he's developing into a real nice horse, but he's never run on dirt before. Yeah, we were talking about the artificial surface at the beginning of the show in a different context. And here is Tyson, all of his starts have been on the artificial surface uh, for the most part up in uh, Canada, outside of Toronto at uh, Woodbine. And, and, and he's in uh, excellent form right now with a, a, a win in a grade two at uh, Woodbine, uh, which followed a grade three win and a third in a, in a grade two up there. Josie Carroll is... Uh, an excellent, excellent trainer, uh, as you mentioned, who spends most of her time in Canada, but will ship uh, when she's got some contenders. Yeah, absolutely. And Tyson, you know, that the, the one defeat, I, I think he probably needed that experience. It was only his third race, second after a long layoff. Used to be in Todd Pletcher's barn, interestingly, early on, and then he moved to Josie Carroll. Just looks like a horse who's got a lot of talent, might be a classy Canadian. Canadians don't all, often uh, uh, measure up to the Americans on dirt, but Tyson looks like a classy horse. It's on a topic who probably will be okay at a mile and a quarter on dirt. We'll see. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt. Um, not nearly the speed that we saw in the jockey club. They kind of have them bunched up, but there's not one true speed horse in the race. Um, Tyson is close, 
on their list. Warrior Johnny, another horse who's shown a little bit of promise. Maybe a horse who's shown more promise is Bright Future, also out there. Uh, he's trained by Todd Fletcher. But both Bright Future and Warrior Johnny have good runs at Saratoga. Warrior Johnny's came last year. Bright Future just did it recently. Yeah, just did it recently in an allowance race. Uh, got a big, uh, big victory by almost five lengths. And that came uh, after a little bit of time following the Brooklyn handicap when Bright Future was eased. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what went wrong for sure in the Brooklyn. Uh, and that was his only previous stakes attempt. But Bright Future has shown flashes. Unfortunately, he comes back with disappointments after that. He's burned a lot of money, even in the Brooklyn. He was one of the favorites there. But I tell you what, that race at Saratoga, his first race at Saratoga, uh, that was a good allowance field, and he, and he did it easily. So Bright Future uh, is an interesting horse. And you see, with no real speed horse in the race, it's a question. Who will be on the lead? Maybe it's Bright Future. I could say some of the same things for Warrior Johnny, trained by Phil Bauer, but maybe uh, Bright Future has even shown a little bit more potential uh, headed into this uh, grade one million dollar test here in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Uh, let's take a look at the field again, Matt. Uh, Duke of Love, we haven't talked about. Unbridled Bomber looks like he's in a tough spot here. But Duke of Love is the other Josie Carroll horse. And Duke of Love actually is undefeated on the dirt. He's tried it twice. And Duke of Love has won both of his dirt starts, including the middle jewel of the Canadian Triple Crown last year. Yeah, and, and Duke of Love, that's the other Josie Carroll. Uh, and most recently, uh, uh, shipped down to uh, West Virginia to win the West Virginia Governor Cup, uh, I think, it, which is on the undercard of the uh, 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 West Virginia Classic, is it, Brian? Um but uh, a real nice performance on the dirt. Yeah, that was the West Virginia Derby card. Uh, yeah, it was a good performance over decent horses. I, I like it's it's odd because I, I think Tyson is the horse with a lot more potential to be a real graded stakes horse in America than Duke of Love. Duke of Love is a nice horse who obviously likes dirt and is two for two on the dirt, both stakes wins. But I think Tyson is the one, he hasn't run on dirt yet, so we have to see. But I think of the two, Tyson is the one with a lot more potential uh, headed into this jockey club. We're going to see how much potential he has because he has to face proxy and rattle and roll here in the jockey club. All right, Matt, two mile and a quarter million dollars, seven figure races on either coast. Uh, Breeders' Cup Classic implications, uh, three year old uh, of the year implications, because I think if go, hey, if Ar Archangelo is the leader of the division now, Belmont win, Travers win. Peter Pan before that. But I tell you what, if Go Rocky Ride ends this year with a Haskell win, a Pacific Classic win, and a Breeders' Cup Classic win, there's no denying that Go Rocky Ride will supplant uh, uh, Archangelo as the three year old champion. That's still a lot to get done, though. Yeah, it, it certainly is. But yeah, uh, uh, and it's important to say that right now, Archangelo is on the top of uh, uh, the three year old division. But Pennsylvania Derby still to come, and and uh, there there's there's always the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, the Pennsylvania Derby, by the way, might be the target of Practical Move, and I've liked Practical Move for a while now. He's the only horse who beat Go Rocket Ride. He's been off uh, for a long time since winning the Santa Anita Derby, so that'll be interesting. There are, there are three year olds that that could still. Uh, take that championship away from Archangelo. We're going to see. But for now, let's get our top picks in these two mile and quarter million dollar races. We'll start with Delmar, Matt, and we'll start with you, sir. Okay, Brian. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, it. we talked about the Pacific Classic. Uh, I am going to go with the three year old, and I am going to go with uh, uh, Go Rocket Ride in the. Uh, in the Pacific Classic, um, he really has never run poorly. I think there is the uh, upside. I think Go Rocket Ride is a very talented horse, um, and uh, Mandel I think has picked a good spot to try the olders. Yeah, he's he's won on the rail before. Um, I think this is an even tougher spot than the Haskell was. But on the other hand, I think Go Rocket Ride is is still moving forward. I think he. He, 
he could be even better than we saw in the Haskell. So I agree that Go Rocket Ride is the horse to beat in the Pacific Classic. I'm going to go for some odds this time because I think it's a nice betting race, and I think there are it is the opportunity for uh, someone with some decent odds to win this. And I tell you, with the pace, I, I just think it'll be a pretty strong pace. I think a horse can rally in this race, and the horse I picked out is Skinner. Skinner, another three-year-old. We're both on three-year-olds here, Matt, but I think Skinner's a horse who's been knocking on the door. Sheriff's knows he's a good horse, and he's going to win one uh, sooner or later. He's had one prep. Now he gets a good spot, stretching out to 10 furlongs, track he has experience on, good early pace. I'm going to try Skinner at 10 to 1 on the morning line. Let's go to the Jockey Club Gold Cup, Matt. And, and I think what we pick here might be similar to what we just picked in the Pacific Classic. Yeah, I guess so, Brian. Uh, um, I have uh, I have been a fan of Rattle and Roll uh, as he uh, got on that winning streak earlier in the year. I, I think uh, Kenny McPeak has done a really nice job with this horse that uh, showed a lot of promise when he was younger as a two-year-old and, and, and has gotten rattle and roll to uh, get better and better. I think he's at the top of his game right now um, in a field that, you know, he should be able to handle rattle and roll for me. Once again, I, I agree. I think you picked the horse to beat a mile and a quarter. He doesn't have a lot of speed and there's not a lot of speed in this race. So I worry that his rally is going to be just a little stunted if it's a slow pace, but he's one of those horses that seems to come no matter how fast the pace is. He seems to be able to rally even if the pace isn't that fast. So rattle and roll, tough to beat. Proxy at his very best certainly could win this, but both of them in the eight to five, nine to five, two to one, five to two range. Yeah. I just don't think they're great grade one horses. And I really think Tyson is getting good. Uh, he'll have to do it on dirt, but all the breeding says dirt. There's a reason Josie Carroll's bringing him here. I think Tyson is becoming a very nice horse, a little more tactical speed, certainly than rattle and roll. I'm going to try Tyson again for some odds here in the Jockey Club Gold Cup. All right, Matt, that's the show. We did uh, these Breeders' Cup Classic Preps, I guess you can call them their million-dollar races in their own right. Let me get a party shot from you, my friend. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I hope everybody enjoys the weekend of racing in these million-dollar, uh, mile-and-a-quarter races on both coasts. Good races to enjoy. And as, and as always, I want to thank everybody for watching the show week after week. Don't forget to tell them to turn on their notifications. Subscribe, first of all. Subscribe to Horse Racing Nations. Turn on your notifications. Leave a comment from Matt and I. We like to read them bad or good. Uh, but thank you for watching. Also, thank you to our friend in the Louisville office, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. Derby Wars, our sponsor the best contest site out there and time form us of course for their pace projections that we use every week on the show most of all thanks to you for watching we'll be back next week with another big uh, edition of horse center we'll see you then until then good luck